was transcendentally energy of Sri Chaitanya. He is the strict follower of the Goswamis headed by Srila Rupa Goswami. Namo Bhakti Venodaya Satchirananda Namine Gauda Shakti Sarupaya Upanuga Varayate. So today we are uh, uh, honoring one of the most important charyas in the line of Gaudiya Vaishnav tradition, Srila Bhakti Venodaya Kaur, who appeared in the year. 1830, um, I believe it was 1838, something like that. The life of Bhakti Vinoda Kaur is important for us as Gaudiya Vaishnavas to understand because it's foundational in setting the stage and creating the uh, to creating the environment by which Srila Prabhupada brought Krishna consciousness to the Western world. Uh, he is the pioneer for Krishna consciousness in the Western world. Now, you might think, well, that seems a little remote, but we can understand it by, by studying carefully the history. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu well, before I uh, begin, let me nama Om Vishnu Padai Krishna Pristai Vutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamri Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauru Bani Pachari Nayani Abhisesa Sunyavari Pashyatya De Satari Nay Panchakalpa Taru Vesja Kripa Sindhu Veva Japa Vitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Vatavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's <coughs> disappearance in the year 1534 and <coughs> his movement as he had established it during those 48 years when he was on earth, continued to exist with many of his stalwart followers for at least uh, another hundred years after his departure to the beginning, maybe we say to the end of the 1600s, almost to the beginning of the 1700s. During that time, great acharyas came on behalf of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, such as Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, Baladev Vidyu Bhushana, and many other great personalities who followed in the line of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, but as time went on, many of these great acharyas disappeared. And somehow Lord Chaitanya's movement became somewhat uh, lost. Uh, the true teachings of Mahaprabhu were lost to many persons who were unscrupulously taking the position of followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and preaching something different than he, what he was preaching. And during those years, from the, say the beginning of the 1700s, the end of the 1600s, to the appearance of Bhakti Venota Kaur in the middle or the early part of the 1800s, uh, many what is called ah sampradayas came up. These were persons who claimed allegiance to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, some of them claiming to be uh, uh, family members of Lord Nityananda, even Lord Chaitanya. Others taking Lord Chaitanya's teachings and twisting it for their own personal aggrandizement for their own personal gain. And this started to really develop. And by the time Bhakti Vinoda Kaur was, when you say a young man, there were always about 13 major 
ah sampradayas. Not sampradayas, but ah sampradayas. And that means they were not authorized. And uh, so Bhakti Vinod Thakur was one of the persons who helped to reestablish the true teachings. In fact, he is the main person who established the true teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after it was lost for about 150 years. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur was born in the Shakta family line. He wasn't born in Vaishnav family. He was a Shakta. But at one point in his life, he came across the Bengali version of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Upon coming and reading this particular book, he became so enlivened by Lord Chaitanya's life and teaching that he, he, undergo, he underwent a great study of this work. After studying it very, very carefully, he started to write about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. And during the latter part of the, uh, of, uh, the uh, 1800s, he wrote many books and he also engaged in many activities to help reestablish Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. Now he was practically a lone ranger in the sense that there wasn't hardly any support for him. There weren't so many stalwart Vaishnavas at the time that could actually give him support. And he was like someone who fearlessly, single-handedly just wrote articles, books, periodicals, and took opportunities to preach whenever the, uh, the opportunity came the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After a while, he gained some accreditation because he qualified himself as a magistrate in the British Raj. And in that uh, position as being a magistrate, he was exemplary in doing his service. So much so that the British uh, considered him to be the best of all the magistrates that they had under their employment. And they gave him his own personal railway card that would drive by his house, pick him up and take him to work and back every day. Instead of riding in the crowded trains, they gave him his own car onto the train and he had his own private quarters where he could do his work while he was traveling back and forth. Now, this was how uh, much he was appreciated. It said that what other magistrates would take hours to conclude in these different court cases, he would do it in even a, within a few moments. He had such vision to see and understand the situation that he could clearly give the correct uh, uh, verdict in whatever situation he was in. So he developed a wonderful reputation. Uh, in 1869, he gave a speech, which was later written down as called the Bhagwat. In that speech, he really helped to revive the importance of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam was not understood for what it actually was. It was sometimes seen as simply a series of stories that, you know, that the grandmothers tell their children during the late night hours in, of one's life. And uh, so Bhaktivinoda Thakur took the, all of the mistaken understandings that was given to Bhagavatam and he spoke, this was a, a, a speech that he gave to many people in 1869, and it was called the Bhagwat. And that speech is now written into a form of a periodical, which you can read called the Bhagwat by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Um, in 1896, he composed a book called The Teachings and Precepts of Lord Chaitanya. And in that book, he uh, gave a very succinct, but a very clear and direct 
understanding of the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he uh, composed that into a, a, a book and then he had many copies of that book uh, printed. And he sent that book all around the world to major universities. One of them wound up in the McGill University in Canada and later was discovered by the devotees of Srila Prabhupada when they uh, were doing the library party going from uh, uh, libraries to libraries. They happened to go to McGill's library and found that particular book. They showed it to Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada was so happy to see that book. But that book was quite... Um, uh, what's to say, very ceremoniously presented because the same year that Srila Prabhupada was born, 1896, was that same year that that book went around the world. So the person who would take the, cha the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu around the world appeared at the same year when that, the book of Lord Chaitanya's teachings went into the Western world through various university libraries. So it's interesting how Bhakti Vinoda Kaur was very fundamental in bringing Lord Chaitanya's movement to the Western world. He also had a vision. One day he was looking in the area of Navadvip towards the yoga pit. And he saw, not in a dream, but in a vision that People from the black race, the brown race, the white race, the red race, the yellow race, all the five races of the world were together having kirtan, singing Jai Satchinandana, Jai Satchinandana. Then he could understand that someday soon a great personality would appear in the world and take Lord Chaitanya's message to every town and village of the world. And that was also prophesized that in every town and village, Lord Chaitanya, it's written in Chaitanya Charitamrita that uh, in every town and village, Lord Chaitanya's message will be spoken. And so this is Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He was a visionary, he was a great writer. He wrote, wrote so many books. One of the most important books that devotees are recommended to read, and I, I emphasize that with great, uh, <clears throat> with, with great uh, force, that that is called Jaiva Dharma. Please read and study that book. It is the complete science of bhakti yoga given in a dialogue form he creates a setting by which the message can be um, revealed in such an interesting way. Because if you sit down and you read philosophical teachings, just uh, like page after page, you find it very difficult to stay with it or even to memorize it. So he did the same thing, but he, he, he placed it within a context of a dialogue and a story based on a, the life of a particular uh, devotee who was trying to become Krishna consciousness and what he had to go through, the spiritual masters he met. Um, so this book, Jaiva Dharma, Srila Prabhupada said, we should read this book. He emphasized the importance of this book. The whole science of Bhakti Yoga nicely explained in a very interesting and a captivating way is uh, Jaiva Dharma. Personally, I read the book twice. I would even be interested in reading it a third time. It is so interestingly presented. Another book by Bhakti Vinoda Accord and Srila Prabhupada also uh, gave emphasis on for us to read was Chaitanya Shikshamrita. And that's the very basic principles of Krishna consciousness practice, along with some very deep understandings of Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham, uh, especially the demons of Vrindavan and what they represent. 
Uh, each of the demons represents a particular anartha. Uh, Bhakti Vinoda Akur very nicely explains that in a very interesting way. And many, many ways to uh, execute devotional service, Chaitanya Shikshamita is also uh, one of the more important works by Bhakti Vinoda Akur that was given emphasis by Srila Prabhupada. Krishna Samhita is really an explanation of Srimad Bhagavatam. That's a beautiful work also. Uh, Bhakti Vinoda Akur is was so profuse in writing books, articles, periodicals, even news, news, uh, newsletters. He was constantly writing. He had he was a family man, man also. He had a big family. It's mentioned he had 10 children. And he uh, was a magistrate. Sometimes we think, oh, we have so many family responsibilities. We have work responsibilities. But even Otakor had 10 children plus being a, a magistrate in the British Raj. And still, he was very active in writing books and in preaching Krishna consciousness. He always found time for devotional life. His schedule was interesting. It's, it's written that he would, uh, he would uh, take rest every day, at, every evening at 7.30 in the evening. And then he would get up around midnight and then he would write. And after some time he would chant and then uh, take breakfast in the morning uh, and then give a little time to his family, then go to work up until uh, right after lunch around one o'clock. Then he would come back home again, spend a little time with the family and again engage in writing. But he was such a powerful personality that his family felt so satisfied with whatever time that they gave because he gave quality association. Not that he just gave a lot of time or a little bit of time. Whatever time he gave, which wasn't much, it was enough to satisfy and fulfill all the needs of the family responsibilities. This was Bhakti Vinod Thakwa. There's an interesting story in the life of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, which His uh, Holiness uh, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj has included in his work called Abhay Chiran, which is a video series of the life of Srila Prabhupada. In that, uh, one of the earlier versions of that video series is a little bit about Bhakti Vinod Thakur's encounter with this bogi yogi. There was one person, his name was Bishikashena. And he appeared at the time when Bhakti Vinoda Kaur was a magistrate. He claimed to be an incarnation of Mahavishnu to come to free India from British rule. And he was preaching against the British all over parts of Bengal. At the same time, Claiming to be an incarnation of the Lord, he 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 was uh, placing himself in the position of Krishna, acting like he was the supreme personality of Godhead, and he was going into villages and uh, in soliciting young girls to dance with rasa dance. So he was having a lot of illicit connections with many young girls from the villages. And because he was very powerful, people believed that he was the supreme personality of Godhead who had come. His power was that he had this shakti, that he could speak in such a way that would convince people of whatever he was saying. There is a particular, we call it a, uh, a mystic power. There are, there are 18 mystic powers eight primary and 10 secondary. And one of the primary mystic powers is to speak in such a way that you can convince people of whatever you're speaking about. 
he had that shakti it is a mystic power and so he used that to engage in this illicit activity with young girls so the british were concerned and so um, and so they they asked bhakti vinoda for can you investigate this particular case and see if you can curtail this person's activities so he went and he met Bishik and Shena. Bishik and Shena was happy to meet Bhakti Vinod Thakur and vice versa. But then Bhakti Vinod Thakur explained that actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he, he resides in Jagannath Puri and he is there in his beautiful form as Jagannath. So uh, you should worship that Supreme Lord who is now taken, who has appeared as Lord Jagannath in his residence in Puri Dham. When Vishikeshena heard that, he became somewhat unhappy and insulted. He said, ah, oh yes, yes, that is the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is in wood, but I am the Supreme Lord who has appeared amongst all of you. When, pra when Bhakti Vinoda Kaur heard that, how he insulted the Supreme Personality of God and being a great devotee of the Lord, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur became quite angry and using his position as in the, in the uh, as a British Raj, he, uh, he called the British soldiers to arrest uh, this pretentious personality and put him in jail. So while Vishikasheda was in jail, he had mystic power. So he wanted revenge against Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So he created a situation where Bhakti Vinod Thakur and all his family members came down with very high fevers. And it seemed like if their fever was going to increase, they would die. Uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur's family was very much concerned that they were going to die. And so they asked their husband, his husband, his wife asked him, my dear husband, you know, this, this yogi, he's going to kill us all. So please, maybe you should free him. Bhakti Vinod Thakur would say, I will never free this rascal. Let us all die, but he must stay in jail. He is simply a cheater. And so it was getting quite severe. Finally, one personality, we don't know who it was, came to Bhakti Vinod Thakur and said, this yogi, Vishikashena, his power is in his hair. He had long matted locks. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur took the clue and sent in a barber and uh, they forcibly gave him a haircut. <laughs> Shaved him up, got him ready for the real, you know, initiation. So when he lost his hair, he also lost his power because he had put his mystic power in his hair. And then all that mystic power was lost. And after some day, after a few days, uh, he became weaker and weaker and weaker, and finally he died in jail. So that particular episode is mentioned in the life of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, but it's also seen in a video version done by Bhakti Churu Maharaj in the life of Prabhupada called Abhay Charan, which was about a 20 video series that Maharaj put together many, many years ago. So, it's worth watching. And uh, it's quite exciting to watch this particular pastime. So this was how Bhakti Vinod Thakur was fearless in uh, tackling these pretentiousness. Because as we mentioned, there had been so many sampradayas. There were Aul, Baal, Sakivedi, Jad Goswami, Guru Ganagari, 
What else was there? Sahaji. Uh, so many. Vib uh, Nityananda Bamsa. So many uh, as, uh, 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 a sampradayas. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur challenged many of them. And then he was able, with his writings, to uh, help to reestablish Lord Chaitanya's mission. And of course, at one point, he was praying that this was in uh, the early part of his preaching against these sampradayas. He was saying, my dear Lord, please send me someone from your personal entourage that will help me spread Lord Chaitanya's mission. I am simply fighting here alone against all of these uh, bogus groups. So please send one, somebody who is coming as your personal uh, servant. And lo and behold, he didn't expect it, but his son, it appeared as his son, and that was Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who was the fifth son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And of course, another son, Lalita Prashad, Bhakti Vinod Thakur's son, Bhakti Siddhanta, was named uh, Bhimala Prashad, that was his name when he was born. And then he also had another son called Lalita Prashad, who was also another great devotee, which we don't hear much about. And the devotees under Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada himself went to visit Lalita Prashad in his Bhajan Kutir, somewhere in Bengal, before he left the world. So the Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was that person and this was illustrated when uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur was the magistrate in the uh, Jagannath temple. He was the, uh, not magistrate, but uh, he was the main person to take care of the Jagannath temple and rearrange all of the activities of Lord Jagannath in a very scheduled way. And he did that. He did that. He worked very hard and got all the offerings Jagannath gets 56 offerings of prasadam per day. 56 offerings, can you imagine? And he organized them to the T where they can, they were all organized on time. If you've been, if you know a little bit about Jagannath Temple, there are 700 stoves in the Jagannath kitchen in the temple, which cook practically around the clock Prashadam for Lord Jagannath. Jagannath is the most fed of all of the deities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And it says that anyone who gets the chance to take the remnants of Lord Jagannath, those remnants can automatically produce love of God within the heart of that devotee. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur, during the time being involved with the Jagannath Temple, his son was born. Bhakti Vinoda, of course, house was on Grand Road. You can still see it today, the place, the birthplace of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Bhakti Vinoda, Kaur had gone away for some other business, and the Rathi Asher came up right after his son was born. So during that Rathi Asher time, when Jagannath was riding on his car, cart down Grand Road, he Jagannath stopped the cart right in front of Bhakti Vinod Thakur's house. At that time, Bhagavi Devi, who was the wife of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, took her, his little child, Bhima Prashad, and she brought him onto the cart of Lord Jagannath, and she placed the child right at the feet of the deity. Now, the deity is big. He is, uh, he is like, he's uh, two meters high and one meter wide, so it was very big. And this little baby sitting right at the feet of the deity. And all of a sudden, for no apparent cause, the, deed, the garland that was around the neck of Jagannath falls off and lands in a circle around the little child, Bhimala Prashad Bhakti Siddhanta. 
the, the garland landed just all around him in a beautiful circle. When his wife saw that, she was amazed. And later when she told her husband, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he understood, yes, the Lord has sent a great soul and he, he's come in my family, Bhimala Pushad. And of course, this was the actual correct understanding. And of course, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati studied a lot of the works of his father and later on also produced many, many writings and many speeches in bringing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission around the world. So these three personalities, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and Srila Prabhupada, our Srila Prabhupada, these three people, Bhakti Vinod Thakur brought Lord Chaitanya's mission back in such a way that it was in vogue again and people were starting to understand what is the real teachings of Lord Chaitanya and how these teachings can be practiced in the proper way. Uh, he, he really established that Bhakti Siddhanta took it to the next level and created an army of sannyasis who were preaching all over India, uh, opening temples, establishing diorama uh, displays, and uh, organizing big, big festivals where sometimes 20 to 25,000 people would come for these festivals. And, uh, and one of those personalities, of course, became our Srila Prabhupada. He was a Grihasta at the time, but he came to Srila Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And it was Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati who arranged for people to go to different countries around the world to spread Lord Chaitanya's mission. He sent devotees to England, to London. He sent devotees to Germany. He sent devotees to Burma, which is now Myanmar. He sent devotees to France and, and other places. In, and uh, unfortunately, not many of them had much success, but it was Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's desire to preach Krishna consciousness around the world. And then our Srila Prabhupada came and Srila Prabhupada understood that in order to preach Krishna consciousness, I would have to go to the Western world. And so he thought many of my God brothers tried many places in England is the center of the, uh, of Europe, but my God brothers have gone to England and they failed. So let me go to a new place. So he decided to make New York his vision. And then the rest is history. So we have to understand these three personalities, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the visionary, the person who brought Lord Chaitanya's mission back in vogue after it was lost for 150 years, lost and not only lost, or in, but lost in the wrong way. People were getting the wrong idea. Sometimes even today, people think that Lord Chaitanya was simply uh, a person who uh, brought a whole bunch of people together and they were engaged in illicit activities. So people have so many misconceptions hearing from the wrong sources about Lord Chaitanya's movement. It was Bhakti Vinod Thakur who fought uh, continuously to reestablish through his writings and his teachings and it was Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati who set the stage for Srila Prabhupada going to the Western world and preaching Krishna consciousness. In our day-to-day -day life, Bhakti Vinod Thakur has a very significant role in the day-to-day -day worship that we perform. Um, the prayer, Sarira Avidya Jal Jatendriya Dehe Kahal, the prasadam prayer that was written by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, which we sing every day. Jaya Radha Madhava, Kunja Bihari, Gopi Janavalava, Giri Vadadari, 
Yasodanandana, Rajajana Ranjana, Jamumatira Vanachari, Kunja Bihari. And this beautiful song that we sing, the little bhajan we sing before we deliver a class on the Shastras was composed by Bhakti Vinodha Kaur. And Srila Prabhupada commenting on this particular song has said that Bhakti Vinodha Kaur has included all the essential principles of the absolute truth in his Muda Vrindavan in this particular four line stanza. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavalava Girivaradari Yasoda Nandana Rajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tiravanachari Kunja Bihari. In these four lines, the whole, the essence of Lord, of Lord Krishna's pastimes are given in a nutshell. Beautiful, beautiful bhajan. He also is famous for Gorarti, Kibajayo, Jaya Gorachanda. We sing that every day in, the, in our temples around the world. The glorification of the the famous meeting of Lord Chaitanya with his disciples when during the uh, Mahaprakash Leela, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, before then he was not revealing himself of who he was. And then at this particular time, amongst all of his disciples and followers, he, in the house of Sri Thakur, sat on the throne of the, of, the, of the altar. He sat on the altar and accepted worship as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. During that time, this particular song was sung. Kiva jayo jaya mora chandi aruti ke Beautiful, beautiful glorification of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his mission of Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> and of course, there are other, there are other works by Bhakti Vinoda Kaur that are very significant in our life. So today is a very special day. We can get the mercy of these great souls by hearing about them, by speaking about them, by reading about them, by uh, uh, trying to implement more and more of their teachings in our day-to-day -day life. And so we want to take advantage of this great opportunity to um, go deeper into our Krishna consciousness. The lives of the great souls are, is, the, is the mission of the Supreme Lord himself. We learn about Krishna and his mission from the lives of the great souls. And Bhakti Vinoda Kaur is fundamental in giving us that. Um, what I have sp spoken so far about Bhakti Vinoda Kaur is just a slight drop in the ocean of unlimited activities that he performed when he was here. Uh, devotees, every year when we do the uh, Gore Mandala Parikram, in the area of Navadvi, we go to the house of Bhakti Vinod Thakur and we sit there for many, many hours discussing his glories. And you can see his room is there where he, 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 where he lived, where he wrote, where he spent much time. And also there's a beautiful compound there, which is now they established the, the um, Bhajan Kutir, of uh, Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj is also established there. So, uh, yeah. So, and of course, the the unlimited songs that Bhakti Vinod Kaur has written, so many wonderful bhajans uh, in glorification of uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and pure devotional service. Amala Jivan Sade Pape Rate, Nahi Opo Yedale Sa. This is one of the more beautiful bhajans by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So many 
wonderful, wonderful songs of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Uh, so mm, we have many song books, and of course, he wrote Saranagati, which is just voluminous amounts of songs glorifying the Supreme Personality of Godhead, especially Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Nityananda also. So, um, yeah, it's a very important day. We can gain so much mercy on this day by hearing about Bhakti Vedanta Kaur. There is a book called The Seventh Goswami, written by a very dear and very senior god brother of mine, um, Rupa Vilas Prabhu. He's written books about Bhakti Siddhanta, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Haridas Thakur. Uh, he's written about their life. But in Bhakti Vinod Thakur's book, uh, you'll find many, many, many interesting and very inspiring uh, stories of the life of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Bhakti Vinod Thakur also wrote his own biography. It's interesting. Uh, that's not usually done. Um, it's you could say it's we could call it an autobiography, but it's it's described as being a biography. He wrote a biography on his own life, and um, um, there's so much available. So I'll uh, I'll conclude here, and uh, uh, tomorrow is the. Appearance day, or I'm sorry, disappearance day of Srila um, Srila Haridas Thakur. It follows the appearance day of Bhakti Vinod Thakur each year. And tomorrow there will be a class on Srila Haridas Thakur also. Uh, so, um, also, that is a beautiful book written about the life of Srila Haridas. And Prabhupada spoke a lot on Haridas Thakur, also on Bhakti Vinod Thakur and his Guru Maharaj also. Okay, we are fortunate, these three Acharyas, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and his Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, these three have come successfully to set the stage for world Krishna consciousness to bring Lord Chaitanya's desire to preach in every village around the world. You may think, well, how is that possible? The world is so messed up with so many other activities, but it's happening slowly, slowly, slowly. Krishna consciousness is spreading to every town and village. It's happening right before our eyes and it will only increase. Um, because Lord Chaitanya says that the whole world will become Krishna conscious. And that when Lord Chaitanya, who is God himself, says that, you can say, you can understand, there's no doubt about it. But we have to make it happen. It's up to us to do the work. We, he, the Lord won't do the work for us. We have to do it. If we don't do it, we simply delay the prophecy, the fulfillment of the perfect the prophecy. But if we become more and more serious and take the Krishna consciousness, chant the holy names, read the Srimad Bhagavatam, engage in various types of devotional service and preach Krishna consciousness, this movement will spread like wildfire. Srila Prabhupada also said when he was personally present, he told us, he said, we can take over the world in 18 days. But he, then he looked at us and said, but because you are not ready. So we are still trying to get ready. <laughs> what is that readiness? That we must be dedicated to the instructions of Krishna coming through Srila Prabhupada. We make that our life and soul. Okay, thank you very much. If there's any questions or comments. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It was really nectar and great fortunate to hear past times of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur.
uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions, comments, or realization, please unmute yourself or you can type in chat window. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This is Mahabha Basis of Guru Shri Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Mahar Guru Maharaj, for uh, this wonderful poetry. It's so easy to absorb uh, ourselves in the, in the pastimes of Acharyas, especially uh, through your realizations. And I was just thinking about uh, Java Dharma. It's like an amazing book. I saw it in a manner they're reading it many times. And I was just thinking about the books of Acharyas. Should when should we kind of start reading the books of Acharyas? Is it after we kind of read the all the like the small books of Shiva Prabhupada, Bhagavad Gita, Shiva Bhagavatam Chaitanya Charitamrita, or is it okay to start reading it parallel parallelically? I think we should continuously daily read the books of Srila Prabhupada, but we can also sign at the same time include these works recommended by Prabhupada, such as Jain Vidharma. We should not stop our reading of Srila Prabhupada's books. But we should just simply uh, add these more, these other books that have been recommended, especially Bhakti Vinanta Guru's books. Wow, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, and do you re re do you recommend to read a specific number of pages daily or a specific number of time? What is kind of a maybe more beneficial? Well, that's up to the reader. Whatever you, whatever seems to be more effective in, in the reading process, then you you uh, you can determine that. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Mohan Isini, Radha Mataji, uh, you have a question? Mohan Thank Nasi. you. Yeah, Mohan Nasini, Radha. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for that great lecture. I was thinking about uh, what you said about uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He had his power in his hair. Um, could, but I didn't understand it properly. How did he have uh the power in his hair could you please explain it um you mean this this mystic yogi oh yeah 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 that's what i mean um well i'm not a mystic yogi so i i don't don't know how um he acquired the power, he acquires these power by austerities. But the, the use, what he would do, there would be sparks coming out of his hair, sparks of fire. And then when people would see that, they would think, oh, you know, this is such a great personality. So he could make these sparks of fire come from his hair. So he developed this mystic power. But devotees also have mystic power because they are con they are connected with Yogeshwar, the master of all mystics, or Krishna himself. Therefore, Prabhupada says devotees have all powers, but they don't use them. But if it's necessary, they will use them. Necessary means in order to spread Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to try to develop these mystic powers. You already have it according to the, the strength of your bhakti. The stronger your bhakti is, the more power you have. Mm -hmm. I was told many times, actually, that I have uh, this energy, that I'm so calm and this and that. And they ask me, what is... Uh, the uh, secret behind it then i say it but you know the only secret behind it is that i meditate i chant mantras and I, there is uh, the most powerful mantra and then uh, i ask them if they want that i will give them this mantra if they say yes then i give the mantra nice that's very nice 
Yeah. Devotees are empowered by the Lord. Thank you so much. I hope your health is back to normal. Yes, it's going better and better day by day. Good, 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 good. Okay. Thank you so much. That's the mercy of the Vaishnavas. Oh, yeah, very nice prayers. I got uh, great healing from Andevoti also in Serbia. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, I have one question on Bhakti Vrata Thakur. So uh, in six, like in the Goswami Parampara, we uh, say always uh, Jagannath Das Ji, Baba Ji, and uh, then Bhakti Vrata Thakur, and then uh, Gaur Kishore Baba Ji. So Jagannath Das Baba Ji was his, his spiritual master, like initiation master, or he was his Shiksha Guru. Because somewhere I read, that Bipin Vihari Goswami, Sri Bipin Vihari Goswami was his actual initiation master. But I never see him in any... Yeah, oh, yeah. Bipin Vihari was the uh, spirit, was the initiated spiritual master of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Gorki Shur Das Babaji Maharaj was a Shiksha disciple of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He used to come and sit in the lectures of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, when Bhakti Vinod Thakur would give lectures. And that's how Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati met him. He was he saw this person, he would come and sit in the back and listen to his father's lectures. So our line is Shiksha, it's not a Diksha line. Hmm. Is that clear? Yes, Guru Maharaj. No, that's important to understand because I thought like our line was Diksha, so we all follow this. No, diksha. We're, we're, we, we are a, a combination of Diksha Shiksha, but mostly it's Shiksha. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. It's yeah. helpful. <clears throat> Maharaj, this, what, what does it mean to be in a Shiksha line, not Diksha line? Does it mean that we kind of like give Emphasis no, it means the, pr the pr prominent personality that follows the previous acharya is not that acharya's disciple. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That shiksha line. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Raj Prabhu, you have a question? Please go ahead. Hi Krishna Maharaj, please, uh, oh, glory to Srila Prabhupada, please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, please can you explain, when you said that uh, Lord Chaitanya Maharaj said that the whole world become Krishna conscious, what did he actually mean? Well, uh, that, yeah, that question comes up and then that's somewhat of enigma, but means that uh, in every town and village there'll be the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That seems to be the, the uh, accepted uh, understanding of that, because it's a pretty vitti achi aranagu gram. What is the rest of that verse? Who knows? More prachar nam. Pritti vitti achi nagaragi gram. Uh, Nam. Lord Chaitanya said, in every town and village, my holy name will be chanted. So that's what it means. Pretty much, that's a direct quote from Lord Chaitanya himself. Sarvatra Pachar Hoi Moranamya. Put the whole verse on there, uh, Sri Devi. 
Well, see if you can find a translation also. So that's pretty much the essence. And I don't, you know, it's not like everybody's going to be, you know, wearing tea lock and, you know, dhotis like that. The other religions will, will also be there, but Lord Chaitanya's movement, they'll be chanting everywhere. And that's, that's the Yuga Dharma. Priti Viti Ache Nayata Nagarari Gram Sarvatra Mur Murnam Sarvatra Pachar. Yeah. So, um, yeah. All right, thank you, Maharaj. So, if we want, if we want to uh, fulfill Lord Satanya's prophecy in our present situation, we need to have Harinam Sankirtan everywhere. And if, if you have Harinam Sankirtan everywhere around the world, this pandemic will be gone in one day. <laughs> Completely gone. If all the devotees come out in the streets and does Harinam Sankirtan, there will be no more pandemic. It will be gone. Lord Chaitanya said that in every town and village, my holy name will be sung. Yeah. That's the translation. That's wonderful, Maharaj. Yeah. But we need to see what it takes to mobilize all of the devotees to become more connected to Lord Chaitanya's mission in terms of preaching and getting out in the streets and doing Harinam. There are many temples who do regular Harinam, but that's not enough. The Prabhupada started the movement in the Western world with Harinam. That's how we became known to people in general, and that's how we actually started to make devotees through the Harinam Sankirtan movement. Devotees were doing 10 hours a day average every day, uh, Harinams during the early days of the movement. Everywhere in the world, you look at the old Back to Godhead magazines, and you'll see, all you see is Harinams in different places around the world photos of the devotees dancing and chanting in different places. That's how our movement spread. And book distribution came to supplement that afterwards. And then once the books came out and the holy names were there, then our movement went and spread like wildfire. If we sit in our little rooms in front of our computers all day and do nothing but just, you know, go online, this movement won't go anywhere. <laughs> we need to get out. We can also preach through the computer and that's important. We can also do that and, that, and that's going on. But the real preaching will be out of this, you know, to meet people on a personal level and bring them to Krishna consciousness through various types of programs especially uh, Harinam and distributing Srila Prabhupada's books. Mm -hmm. Put the books everywhere, in libraries, in hotels, in hospitals, in any kind of public uh, domain, put books everywhere. Flood the world with books, flood the world with the holy name. We have the numbers, but we need the motivation. Motivation is needs to be increased. This movement is very powerful because it's ordained by the Lord, the Supreme Personality of God and Himself. 
If we stay strict, chant our 16 rounds and follow the four regulative principles and find opportunities to engage in preaching Krishna consciousness, this movement will uh, be very attractive. Devotees are attractive, not so much by what we do, but by, by, by who we are. What we do is also attractive, but who we are makes everything attractive. People see, all oh, these people are, are very uh, happy. They're very, yeah, they have something. That's wonderful. That's very inspiring, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah. Organize the devotees and get out, preach, and do Harinam, do book distribution, the whole classes. More and more we need to do this. If every devotee was doing this, the world would be Krishna consciousness tomorrow. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya is, is the empowering force that makes everything happen, but he requires, as he says, I require your help. He's, he's, he speaks that in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He says, I am a gardener and I have a storehouse full of wonderful fruit. And this fruit is the fruit of love of God. And this fruit is very sweet. I am tasting this fruit and I'm also trying to distribute this fruit. But how much can I distribute? I am only one person. So please help me just taste these fruits yourself and distribute them everywhere. That's from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Lord Chaitanya speaks that. Hare Krishna, Sri Devi Mataji, you have raised your hand. Would you like to please go ahead? Uh, yes, Prabhu, if you don't mind, my humble obeisances. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Thank you for this really inspiring class on how Bhaktivinoda Thakur just revived the whole movement single-handedly and fearlessly preached uh, Krishna consciousness. There are so there is so much to learn, understand, and and try to follow in this uh, today's uh, class. So thank you very much for giving this class. My question to you, Guru Maharaj, is how to develop genuine humility, even as we go forward in bhakti and carry out our daily activities or our services. Always uh, keeping in mind that whatever powers we have is coming from Krishna and not get carried away by our position as a uh, temple commander or temple leader or this or that or whatever. How can we maintain, how can actually we develop deep, genuine humility in, in our bhakti? Well, you actually answered it by saying that we have, to, we have to clearly understand and realize that we are simply an instrument in the hands of the previous acharyas, that's all. What we can do and the, and the ingredients by which we are using to do whatever we do are coming by their mercy, coming from Krishna down through the disciplic succession from our, to our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. And he's distributing it and we are taking it. That's all. So it is all their mercy. And the effort we make brings about greater and greater mercy. So the only credit we can take is the effort we make, but the results are not within our hands. They're in the hands of the Supreme Lord through his pure devotees. So Prabhupada would say, say many times, you know, you know, people say I've done something wonderful, but I don't know what wonderful I have done. But if I've done anything wonderful, it's simply because I've followed the instructions of my spiritual master. 
It is his mercy. And that's not some, just some statement. It's actually factual. If Krishna wants to empower you, mm -hmm. and you should try to become empowered by Krishna, by qualifying yourself, by, by being eager to spread Krishna consciousness, then uh, there's no limit to that, to that power. It's coming from the Supreme Lord himself, <clears throat> who's the reservoir of all power and all mercy. So we just have to remember, we are simply an instrument, and that's all. Yes, Guru Maharaj, please, please, please give us your blessings and your mercy that we may never ever forget that we are nothing but servants of Krishna. That is so important to remember. Thank you. Hare Krishna. We are not servants of Krishna, we are servants of Krishna's devotees. Gopi Bhatta Bhatta Kamalaya or Dasa Dasa Kamalayas. Yes, Guru Maharaj, that's right. Thank you so much for correcting me. Thank you. That's the clarification. Yes, Guru Maharaj. We are servants of Krishna, but we, we see ourselves as being servants of those who are servants of Krishna. That's the correct understanding given by Lord Chaitanya. Hare Krishna. So Guru Maharaj, we don't have any further questions on chat or okay. We went over time a little bit. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, I have two more classes tomorrow morning, one at 7:30 my time and one at nine o'clock my time. One is with the South African devotees at nine o'clock, and one is at 7:30, which is a Japa session along with preaching about the glories of the holy name. Um, I think Mother Shimati has the information for either, at least one of those two programs. So it's Eastern Standard Time in, in the U.S. at 7.30 a.m. and 9 o'clock a.m., two classes. Um, so if anybody wants to tune in, um, just get the information from uh, Shrimati like that. Do you have both of those information? Um, no, Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Um, I don't have any information, Guru Maharaj. Can you please forward it to me? Um, yeah, I'll do that as soon as we conclude here. Um, yeah, you. I'll send both of them to you. Sure, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. And then make sure you put it out as fast as you can. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Sure. Uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Haribo. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna what, the devotees in in uh, in uh, in uh, Dallas, they like your name. Yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> they really like. Sri Mati, they like your name. Yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Good. Uh, everybody is saying that is short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> This is long and sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a secret someday when I come and see you about how I gave you that name. I'm not going to tell it in public because <laughs> I think it needs to be told privately. <laughs> With Srimati, I had your name for the last Two years I've been waiting to give it to you. Oh, it's your mercy, Guru Maharaj. I'm so fortunate. Uh, well, of course, it's not me. It's simply we try to see what Krishna tells us about the person, and then we give try to give a name that's appropriate. It's not, we have nothing to do with the decision. 
In fact, that's true. A lot of times I'm thinking of a name, I'm thinking of a name, I can't think of a name. And all of a sudden, it just appears. And then, and then I say, oh yeah, that's it. So, and so it's, it's Krishna. Thanks. That's the verse. He is the source of knowledge. He is the source of remembrance. He is the source of forgetfulness. Jai Guru Maharaj. No words. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so uh... thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupad ki jai. Anand Koti Vaishnav Brind ki jai. Thank you, Vrindavan Nath, for a wonderful, wonderful uh, expert. The way you handle these Zoom meetings are really first class. Thank you. Jai. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That means you're going to have to stay around for another 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years to continue to do this. And then you're going to have to teach others how to do it so you can cre create a whole disciplic succession of Zoom hosts <laughs> who are experts. <laughs> Just let me know what I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Harry Krishna, my obeisance, these to all the devotees. Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai Shri Ki Jai Thank you Guru Maharaj Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj can you confirm your Gita Nagri tool this is Prem Kishori uh, please accept my humble